Welcome to Lamis.com in our lab video series in Cisco ICE 1.2. You can find a complete list of ICE video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will configure Cisco ICE to support wireless 802.1x with Flex Connect access point. We will look at both central and local switching and try to understand the limitation of local switching mode. And just to give you a quick background on a Flex Connect or formerly known as HVEEP, Usually you convert an AP to Flex Connect when you want the user traffic to be dropped locally instead of everything being tunneled back to the controller. And these so-called local switching mode are commonly found in remote sites deployment. Now for some instance ID on the Flex Connect AP, you still need to be tunneled back to the controller. You can leave them on the default central switching mode. Now Flex Connect central switching as far as the ICE is concerned work the same way as the AP regular local mode. It is only the Flex Connect local switching that you might lose certain functionalities, and we will look at those in this lab. On our network diagram, we have a Cisco ICE 1.2 installed the IP of dot .102 and VLAN 32. On the same VLAN, we have a Windows 2008 domain controller and DNS server, the IP of dot .40, and we also have our virtual wireless line controller running version 7.5 installed the IP of dot .104. Now for the user VLAN, we have two VLANs, VLAN 64 and 65, with the VLAN 65 is intended for internet only access. Now the access point is on VLAN 64 and we'll be getting a IP from the DSCP. We have a domain computer, Win7 Test1, that we'll be using to connect to our wireless network with the SSID LM-internal, it's going to be 802.1x enabled. Now for our AD users, we have two test users, admin1 and support1, with admin1 as part of the network admin and we'll be placing them under the policy that will permit all access. While the support1 is part of the network support, we'll make sure the user only has the internet only access. We're going to begin our configuration with Flex Connect Central Switching, which is the mode that we have been using for all of our labs so far. And this is because we're running the virtual wireless line controller and the only mode that the AP supported is the Flex Connect. As to show you with the LM right here, the controller, and we're currently on the AP, LM-AP1, you can see the AP mode is currently set to Flex Connect already. Since we're already on the wireless line controller, I might as well show you the configuration for the SSID that we're going to be using in this lab, which is LM-Internal, right here. We have it configured by default to be mapped to VLAN 64, with the security to WPA to WPA2, and the AAA server point to our ICE server.32.102. And under the advanced option, we need to make sure the allow AAA override is enabled as well as the next state to be radius NAC. And these are just the mandatory configuration when you need the wireless controller to interact with ICE. Okay, as you can see under the advanced option, if you scroll further down, currently the local switching mode is disabled because enable is not checked. All right, now moving on to the configuration on ICE. The first thing we need to do is to add a wireless LAN controller as a network device under the administration and network device. But even before we do that, we need to create a group to identify it being a wireless LAN controller. So under the all device type, we can create a group call WLC for wireless LAN controller. Once we have our network device group, now we can create a network device. Click add, and we're going to call it LM-WLC1. For the IP, controller has the IP of 32.104. Make sure we assign it to a WLC device type that we just created. And for authentication settings for radius, share secret, we'll use Cisco. Just to show is Cisco. And for SNMP setting, we already have our wise line controller configured for SNMP version 2. And again, this is just for the profiling purposes. And for the RO community or read only, we had it set to Cisco RO. Okay, click Submit. Next, we're going to create an authorization profile that will enforce network access. And that would be one for permit all and one for internet only. And that would be under the policy element and results. As you can see, we're trying to work backwards here instead of starting you can't really start configuring the policies until we have all the components in place and that's include conditions which we would do inline and the authorization profile which is what we are creating right now so for authorization profile we'll click add the first one for permit everything we'll call it wlan dash permit all okay and instead of using dalable acl since we're dealing with a 
conventional wise line controller we're going to be using a name ACL which is a part of the airspace ACL name and that name has to match exactly with the access list that has already been defined on the controller and if you go under the controller security access control list right here we already have a access list called lm dash permit dash all that we're going to copy the name and then paste as part of the ACL name Okay, if you are dealing with a newer Unify Access controller, and this is including the 3850 switch or a 5760 controller, then you can either use the downloadable ACL or name ACL. All right, since we have the name ACL defined, click Submit. And the next one is for the internet only, and we're going to call it WLAN-Internet Only. And again, for the airspace ACL name, let's get back to our controller. And look at we have one for LM internet only defined already. And just to look through this real quick, we, we just the, the ACL is just basically allowing DSCP, DNS, and any communication to ICE by default, and then deny everything else to the RFC 1918, which is the private IP, and then permit everything else for the internet. Okay, now we got the name. So copy and paste is lm internet only and submit. Those are all the configuration that we need for authorization profile to enforce the name ACL. Now that we have the results component configured or created, we can now go ahead and proceed with the configuration of the policies. And here we already have the policy set enabled from the previous video with the VPN policy set created. Now we are dealing with a, another type of service. In this case, is wireless. So we're going to create a new policy set. So we can create above. And then we can call this one WLAN. And for condition, and if you're familiar with ACS5, this is basically this part right here is the same as the server selection configuration where you identify uh, conditions to match the type of our radius request. That comes in. So for wireless LAN, we're going to be specifically looking for a particular radius attribute that will tell us that it's the wireless LAN or wireless type of radius request. So we're going to create new condition. Under the select attribute, we're going to use radius, and there's a radius attribute called NASPort type. Actually, that's the wrong one. Let me find the right one. NASPort type right here. And for wireless LAN, It's going to be equal to wireless IEEE 802.11. And just to make sure that it's matching the controller that we have and not like a 3850, if you were to have like a 3850 in your environment, then we're going to have to add another attribute and based on the device type. So that would be device, device type. And we have one created for the WLC. Okay, so with the, these two combinations of conditions, we know exactly that if there's a match, the radius is coming from a wireless LAN controller for wireless access. So click done. Next, we have to define our authentication policy, and this is to specify what identity stores to use to look up the user. It looks like it's been populated by default with our custom identity source sequence with the cert and then AD and then local and then guess in that sequence. Okay, since we are using AD for our identity store in this lab, we can just use that. Okay, and now for our authorization policy, we first going to create one for machine authentication since we're dealing with Windows machine. And it's a good idea to configure machine authentication, although the device might not be configured to perform that. But if it does, then you have a rule to match. And that's to basically allow the Windows machine to communicate with the Active Directory before the user come along and log in. Okay, so let's create a rule call lm dash wlan dash win dash machine for our machine authentication. And then condition, we're going to be matching it based on a group membership of a domain computer. So we we'll create new condition. And that's part of the AD external group. It looks like we haven't yet added the AD group to ICE. So let's jump over to external identity source. Let me bring up a new tab for that under Active Directory Groups. Then we're going to go and pull down the AD group. 
from our domain controller. And the groups that we are dealing with in this lab is we have network admin and network support, and we are missing a domain computer. So right here, domain computer, click OK, save config. And now we can go back and finish off our configuration. You can see here it shows up already third in the list, so domain computer. And we also want to make sure it's the it's a 802.1x for wireless. So since ICE comes pre-configured with conditions library, so we can add condition from library. And here we can go compound condition, and we can just select a predefined conditions right here for wireless 802.1x just to make sure that we're not accidentally matching, for example, wireless map. Okay, so it's always a good idea to be as specific as you can. And now when that condition is met for the machine authentication, we're just going to give them permit all for now. Although in production, you want to kind of lock it down to just the communication to your group of domain controller servers. But here we're just going to be less restrictive and then do permit all for our machine authentication. Okay, next we're going to create another rule to match our network admin access. So we're going to duplicate below, and then we're going to call this one LMWLAN network admin. Okay, we're still going to keep the wireless 802.1x condition matching, but instead for the external group to be domain computer, we're going to choose network admin. Okay, so here network admin, and we're also going to allow permit all access as well for the network admin. Right. The last rule that we need to configure is for network support. So again, duplicate below. Step network admin is network support. And then we have to change our AD group to network support. Okay. And instead of permit all, it will be internet only. Okay, so done. And then submit. Now that we have both ICE and controller configured, we can go ahead and test our configuration. First, we're gonna test the admin one user. So actually, let me lock off. So lock off. And this is our Windows 7 test machine. And then we'll lock in using admin one. Give it a second while that's locking in. Let me pull up a authentication page. And you can see we have, or we're seeing both Machine authentication, you can tell because that's the machine name in 7 test one that came in first at the login page and it got assigned permit all. And soon after that, as soon as we lock in with the user admin one, we also have a successful authentication for that. Okay, so authorization profile is permit all. It was matching a rule for the WLAN network admin. Okay, the policy set name is WLAN and the user is admin at admin one. Data story was being used was AD. Okay, service type was frame. NAS port type was 802.11 for wireless. And then we have a list of group memberships for that particular user. And these are AD user groups. And then here's an airspace ACL name that was returned to the controller for that user. Here we have we should have full access to the network. So let's first try to access the internal resources. We're gonna try to go to the web server on our domain controller. You can see we can hit the IIS servers on that server. Next we're going to try the internet which is just do cisco.com. You can see that goes through as well. So admin one has full access to the network and now if you go to the controller and look at the client, active client, which currently there's only one and that's you can see based on the username here is admin one. Interface is VLAN 64. If you scroll down, you can see the ACL being used right now is LM permit all that is defined on the controller. That's pretty much proves the admin one is working. So now we're going to lock off and then lock back in using support one. Okay, so we need to switch user, other user, and support one, Cisco. Okay, same thing starts with the authentication lock on nice. You can see here the machine authentication came in one more time and then followed by user authentication for support one. But this time the authorization profile return is the VLAN internet only. 
which means that if you're trying to go to a uh, domain controller web server again, which is 172.16.32.40, it shouldn't be working because we have the access list on the controller to restrict all internal resource access. But instead, if you go to cisco.com, you can see that's getting through. Okay, and now on the controller with the same client, the username has changed from admin one to support one, although we're still on the same VLAN, VLAN 64. And I guess I should have shown the IP as well. So let me pull that up, status, detail. You can see the IP it grabbed was kind of what came from the VLAN 64. And then for the access list that got enforced on the user is admin dash internet dash only. Okay, so everything is working properly at this point with the name ACL that we use as far as the policy enforcement. And again, this is the flex connect with the central switching mode. And just to prove that the, the traffic was actually getting tunnel to the controller and dropped off of the controller, we can try to see where this user or the machine MAC address is coming from. So ends with 12, 6, 7. So on the switch, we can do show MAC address and then filter for 1267. You can see that particular MAC address right now is pointing out of port 1015, which is the port of our ESXi server, since it's a virtual wireless LAN controller. Right there, it's the interface of the ESXi, and that's how we know that the user traffic currently is coming from the controller.